so this is our first um, statement that uh, the three panelists are going to respond to. The use of digital technology in outdoor education is fundamentally contrary to all its values. Mm. Jack, you're on. Great. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, and yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, Looking at point two, um, when thinking about the kind of removal of phones um, and subsequently social media, um, informal outdoor education at least, I think we could run into a problem when we think about just how connected young people are in contemporary society. So we know that young people, or at least the kind of um, Generation Zs and Generation Alphas of Global North Society, so that's the kind of um, those born from the late 1990s through to the, the present day or so, know nothing different than a world that is both technologically sustained and critically also technologically reliant. Thanks, Jack. There we go. Over to you, Imran. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jack, for kicking this off. Uh, so I too would like to send or to share my personal uh, statement, which is that I think um, that it's unrealistic to say that we can or must avoid using digital technology in outdoor educational practices. But I think instead we should focus on learning about and gaining a deeper understanding of the impact of digital means, how we can use their potential and how we can mitigate the disadvantages. And that we should continuously uh, reflect on this rather than avoiding to talk about this or denying that digital technologies in any way influence the field. Thanks, Timra. Over to you, Dave Hills. I found it fairly effective to simply ask people the question at the bottom that to what extent is your application of outdoor education in your session a break from the norm of education? For some outdoor educators that I've spoken to, um, it's not. It's another a field of education that's laid into the rest of the curriculum um, and technology is normal and it's laid in like everything else. For others, they're delivering outdoor education as, a, as something different, you know, um, a complete break from the norm, a disconnection. And for them, that statement is correct. The use, about, the use of technology in outdoor education is, is fundamentally contrary to its values. So if we can accept, so that is, that, that this is an if, if we can accept that digital technology is embedded in outdoor education, what do we know about its potential and what are key areas to explore more deeply? Away you go. Dave. Fantastic. Thanks, Simon. Basically, affordance theory is all about the balance between technological determinism on the one hand and social constructivism on the other. And we see this throughout the discussion that we've had today. We see it politically, we see it socially, and it's only going to play out more, I think, in the coming years. So my research has identified five affordances of technology um, in the outdoor education, all of which have an equal an opposing side to including and excluding tech. And they are safety, um, learning and engagement, place and environmental connection, and teamwork and collaboration. And what I've seen from interviewing 30 people and 150 survey responses from those 12 different countries is that every time you include or exclude technology, you always gain something, but then you always lose it as well. Thank you, Dave. Over to you, Imre. Thank you. Um, so what's next? I think some of the key areas um, to explore more deeply, I mean, I think I could come up with like 20 points, um, but I think we should gain a deeper inset, insight in mapping or exploring really all the different ways in which we already use it and to explore more practical and creative ways of using digital learning tools in ways that they um, can serve the, the objectives of, of outdoor education or of a specific activity. Um, and I think the more we learn about this, uh, the more we can give actual these practical advices to each other as well. I mean, we're now three PhD students, as far as we know, working on this topic. And each of us aims to, to get to know more about. Thanks so much, Imran. Over to, to you, Jack. Great. Thanks, Simon. Um, there are clearly, I think, many areas to explore here, as, as has already been mentioned, but 
One area for, for thoughts came from a really interesting book chapter written by Susan Herring in 2008 um, called Questioning the Generational Divide, Technological Exoticism um, and Adult Constructions of Online Youth Identity. Um, now, in it, she says that when adults use um, words such as unprecedented um, or words such as transformational in relation to relationships between young people and technology, then adults inadvertently, at least, kind of other the experiences of young people um, in this domain. And Herring explains this issue as the experience gap between young people and adults. So, so really kind of having adults talk about young people's uses of technology, um, it must not be at the expense of listening to learners themselves. And I think this is critical, really, as we move forward in outdoor education, as we know that there is, for now at least, um, limited literature which centralises the youth voice in this space. Well, I want to thank uh, our three presenters. Okay, bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today.